Hello, my name is Dr. Diwan S. Raja. Today I will discuss about the pharmacology of the carbonic anhydrase inhibitors. These are the acetazolamide, very commonly used, and in the market its name is Diamox. We have other carbonic anhydrase inhibitors like that of Brinjolamide, Dorjolamide. Carbonic anhydrase inhibitors act in the proximal convoluted evils of the nephron. We know that we have around 1 million or more nephrons in our kidney. This medication work in the proximal convoluted table of the nephron. Carbonic anhydrase is an enzyme that is located in the brush border, that is the luminal surface of the proximal convoluted tubular epithelial cell. These are the keyboardal epithelial cells and also inside the cytoplasm of the cell. They are weak diuretics. They are not very strong diuretics. Okay. So we got the carbonic anhydrase inhibitor, and this is the mechanism of action. The carbonic anhydrase catalyzes the reaction of the carbon dioxide and water leading to car carbonic acid. So water plus carbon dioxide unite to form carbonic acid that is catalyzed by the carbonic anhydrase. So, carbonic anhydrase inhibitor prevent the formation of carbonic acid. Carbonic acid is spontaneously dissociated into hydrogen and bicarbonate. So, if we can block the formation of carbon, carbonic acid, then we will not get hydrogen and bicarbonate. The decreased ability to exchange sodium for hydrogen in the presence of acetazolamide result in mild diuresis. We need this hydrogen to exchange the sodium from the proximal convoluted tubule lumen. Bicarbonate is retained in the urine with elevation of urinary pH, that is the negative logarithm of hydrogen ion concentration. The loss of bicarbonate causes metabolic acidosis. There is decreased diuretic action following several days of therapy. Why this happened? Because we have loss of bicarbonate. The urine becomes very much alkaline and the blood becomes acidotic. So blood goes through metabolic acidosis. Urine is alkaline in that condition. The efficacy, the diuretic action of the acetazolamide or carbonic anhydrase is loss. Carbonic anhydrase inhibitor, it works in the proximal convoluted tubule. This is the nephron, Bauman's capsule. We should have glomerulus here, efferent vessel, efferent vessel here. This is the loop of Henle thin seg segment, thick segment, distal convoluted tubule, collecting duct. This is an epithelial cell, keyboard epithelial cell from this part of the nephron. And we have carbonic anhydrase inside the cell and also the luminal surface on the brush board. What will happen by the carbonic anhydrase inhibitor? There will be increased urinary secretion of sodium, potassium, bicarbonate, and there will be increased volume of urine because this is a diuretic. So if we look at the action of acetazolamide, we will give emphasis at this point, we need hydrogen to exchange sodium. If we cannot, make, cannot present hydrogen here, sodium will not be reabsorbed. Sodium will remain in the lumen and sodium will be will go along with water and there will be diuresis. So what happened by carbonic anhydrase inhibitor? The carbonic 
acid cannot be cannot be dehydrated so carbonic acid cannot be converted into carbon dioxide in water and inside the cell then again the carbonic anhydrase inhibitor will prevent the hydration of the carbon dioxide okay so there will be there will be lack of hydrogen and that hydrogen lacking will cause lack of sodium entry into the keyboardal epithelium of the proximal convoluted tubule so what are the therapeutic uses of the therapeutic uses of the acetazolamide and other carbonic anhydrase inhibitor treatment of glaucoma what is glaucoma glaucoma is the increased intraocular pressure it may be due to blockage of the passage of the aqueous humor or may be excessive secretion so this medication decreases the secretion from the ciliary bodies of the eyes so this is used for the management of chronic glaucoma and it should be certainly prescribed by the registered ophthalmologist eye preparations are dorjalamide and also brinjolamide this is a topical preparation so that has some this has some advantage this medication will not be on the system so there will be there will be lack of systemic adverse effects so it will work locally because these are eye drops mountain sickness it is the management for mountain sickness the person climb to 10000 feet very quickly within a day then they may develop mountain sickness characterized by nausea vomiting vertigo weakness and palpitation that may happen and that may happen due to pulmonary edema and also cerebral edema this medication will cause acidosis metabolic acidosis that will decrease the ph of the of the csf plus it will cause diuresis so there will be relief from the mountain sickness this is a medication used in pseudotumor cerebri we have sometimes increased intracranial pressure we don't know the exact cause maybe due to obesity maybe due to uh, oral contraceptive pill or estrogen or maybe due to hypervitaminosis a but most of the cases we don't know the cause that is managed by means of the carbonic anhydrase inhibitor carbonic anhydrase inhibitor also used along with the along with other anti-epileptic drug as as a as additional therapy subjusen therapy with other anti-epileptic drug it is a medication for management of Meniere's disease. Meniere's disease is a disease of the labyrinth, the internal ear. There is some, something wrong in the endolymphatic system of the labyrinth. Okay, there will be tinnitus, ringing sound in the ear, vertigo, and also there will be, there will be deafness that may be episodic, that may be continuous. That is managed by means of the carbonic anhydrase inhibitor. Plain Levin syndrome. This is a psychiatric problem associated with hypersomnia, excessive sleep, plus cognitive and behavioral problem. Okay, that is a man that, that is managed by means of this medication. Also, we can add one more number seven, sleep apnea. People may have respiratory distress during sleep. Okay, that is also managed by means of the acetazolamide or other carbonic anhydrase inhibitors okay so pharmacokinetics it is given orally onset day it has long half-life it is secreted by the proximal convoluted tubule of the kidney adverse effect of the carbonic anhydrase inhibitor inhibitors are the hyperchloramic metabolic acidosis potassium depletion urolithiasis that means formation of stone in the urinary system drowsiness 
paresthesia. This drug should be avoided in cirrhosis of liver. What will happen in a patient who is taking carbonic and anhydrase inhibitor in, in a, who has cirrhosis of liver? In that condition, there may be formation of ammonia, NH3, that will be absorbed in, in the system that may lead to hepatic encephalopathy. So this drug should be avoided in a patient with cirrhosis of liver. And that's all about the about the carbonic and hydrase inhibitor. If you like my video, please support my channel. Please subscribe me and have a nice day. Bye.